Hi everyone, just thought I'd give a bit of an update as what's been going on. CG still not in the observatory yet, but I had to sort out a few things first. Um, firstly, there was a rasa. Um, I will pop in a video. I was going to do a flocking video, but that didn't really pan out, I'm afraid. So, uh, but I did shoot some video, and it shows the damage inside the tube that was done by all the water damage. And we flocked the tube, but we come across a lot of problems. Um, I'll run through how these come apart if anybody's mad enough to do it. Um, but um, it, it was all right. It, it, it went okay, but for some reason the flocking material would not stick to the inside of the tube. Don't know why. It just didn't want to know. So very, very odd. I mean, it's sticking now, but I'll, we'll keep an eye on it. If it does start coming away, we'll have to either just paint the inside with matte black or um, put some sort of glue on it, spray glue on it, just peel it back, spray some glue and then just pull it back down again. I think because I don't know if it's the water or, or the paint they used or what, but it, as you'll see in the video, I'll put after this, the video clip, you'll see. I mean, Nikki done the flocking, I couldn't do it, I'm too ham fisted, so. So she done a good job of that. And we also done her 150 PDS too. Well, I say we, she done it. I stripped it down and put it back together. <laughs> she done the flocking. So, but, so, but on the, on the 150 PDS it stuck okay, but on here it didn't. So it, it's all right, but I guess we'll see. See if it holds or not. Just been flocking Nikki's scope. Um, we're just squaring off the focus. I mean, I've got to do the square off the mirrors and everything next. Right. So, firstly, to flock in the Newtonian, you will need to take. The secondary out now please be aware I mean I've, I've stood my tube up right but you will need to lay this horizontally and I'll show you why well I'll, I'll tell you why for a, a few reasons I mean obviously you don't want to drop screws down down there onto your mirror and also on the finder you're probably not gonna see it but it bolts through another plate there's another plate at the back here, so you, you pull the screws out and that plate can drop down too. So always have the scope horizontal um, when pulling it apart. We took that off, we took the focuser off, which is quite easy to do. Um, took the finer bracket off, took this end off. That all went quite fine. The mirror cell, what I'd do down here is just generally put a bit of masking tape across here and then cut it and then take it off so when you put it on you put it in the same orientation um, I don't know if it makes it easier to collimate afterwards but I'd rather it in the same orientation than having to jiggle everything around to realign it you know, it might just make take longer to do or be more awkward to do I don't know so and what we do is just put tape there, take the same screws out. When I was flocked to 200p, I done it in sections. When Nikki done both this and the raster, she done it in two sections and just managed to peel it and stick it as she went along, all the way round. Um, the 150 PDS was all, more awkward because it was a smaller diameter tube, but um, other than that, it, you know, it done it. The, the rasa was easy on that on that note, so on that side of things. So, 
Right, I should go over to the Rasa. Oh, I'm just a little add, add on I bought as well. I bought an adapter for another finder guider. So now I've got this finder guider I can use. I don't know what happened to the one off the dog because I should have a white one, but I've got a feeling I may have given it away. Let the taking apart commence again. This is why the scope's been flopped. This is the damage that was caused by the water. I went through it. You can see it's all um, damaged the paint inside. So, which can't be very good for internal reflections. You can see, actually see where the water's ran down, which is why it's going to be flocked. The flocking is done inside the rasa. It was a bit of a pain, it didn't want to stick. I don't know whether it was the water damage on the paint inside or what. So we degreased it as best we could. We tried again. Seems better, I guess. We'll see with the test of time, I suppose. And so we get on. And now for the reassembly. Right, the rasa. I mean, you're not going to see it. You're not going to see the flock in there because the lighting's horrible. But. The Rasa, you have to take off both dovetails. Um, then you have to take off the ring. I mean, this is a, this is the dew ring I've got on mine, but you have to take it off because how these screw on, they have a, a nut on the back. So these just won't unscrew out like they do on the Newtonian. These screws here. Uh, not showing up very well. Hang on, let's try this one. There's one. That screw there. I mean, I did replace them as well. But they're just a little bit short. I have got some ones to replace, so I may have to put them in. I mean, they're holding, and they're not going to go anywhere because the dovetail is going to hold everything in check anyway. But I think I may swap them over. Um, but yeah, you got a few of these. Uh, probably six again. Each side. I think they're six again, like the Newtonian, but they got a nut on the back of five and a half mil. I think it's a five mil, half mil nut on the back. So you unscrew these, take them all out. I had to replace the screws because some were quite rusty anyway. And there was a couple missing. So, because I think the previous owner must have stripped it to try, try and empty it of water. Um, it's the same on both ends. You will find there's a bit of stiction with these. And get them off so they might take a bit of getting off so just take your time they will come off they do tend to stick um obviously the mirror cell end get it in a dust free bag you know put it in a I, I put mine in a bag and just just sealed it so no dust or muck could get into it and left it same goes for the corrector plate um, and then we flocked it. It uh, it stuck. I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on it. If it does start coming peeling off, then I'm gonna have to look at another method, I suppose. But uh, it needs something in there because there is damage. I mean, I didn't notice anything on the images, but it's not very healthy in there. Right. Um. I did order a peer adapter because when I picked the rasa it did come with one but it looks a bit homemade um, I mean it might be alright but they've always had, already had to re-thread some holes because one of the threads went in it so I don't know if this aluminium is softer than the one they use for peer adapters I don't know but I, th I thought about how would I connect your connector because I've got to drill through a hell of a lot to fit it to my peer for a start and also with this ridge on here it's actually adding more height and I can't afford much more height because <laughs> already the RAS is almost touching the top of the dome with the dew shield on um, I really don't want to get it any higher so with this one the pier part of the CG will go over and this will bolt through it my only concern I mean this is from, from Pulsar um, I think flow sell them um, these are 8mm and 
they're slightly bigger on here on these on these ones I think it should hold it okay but I guess we'll just find out <laughs> let's hope so the good thing about it is it'll fit an EQ6 so if I do have any issues with the CG I can always put the AZ back on so that's why I got this whereas that one I can't I'd have to change the whole lot swap it over this can stay in situ I can just put the peg on and just bolt the uh, put the uh, mount in situ so that's why I went for it in the end um, I've still got to figure out a way to fit it in my pier because I haven't got a Pulsar pier mine's a homemade pier but I'm sure I can come up with something um, I'm thinking about having some holes drilled so it will bolt straight onto the top of my pier so that's the plan I'm not happy about having to drill holes in it but I've got no choice so what can I do Right, the CG Pro, I've been testing it indoors, I've been having it tracking, I've even got it doing a Meridian flip. Via the software on the handset, not um, via Nina, but it's never ever going to be fully automated in the observatory anyway, because I can't automate the dome, because it's homemade observatory, so... Unless you're really clued up on how to do it and you need some mo powerful motors to turn it, it's not like a lightweight fiberglass dome, it's it's ply and steel, so it's quite a weight to, to shove. Um, so I can't see that ever being fully automated. Um, but then the, the observatory did cost 155 quid off eBay, so what do I expect? <laughs> what do you expect, really? Um, but it does, um, it needs, it'll probably need re-skinning uh, with some more ply on the outside because the bottom's gone a bit rotten. We have done a, a repair on it, and it seems all right. It's nice and dry and everything, so it, it should last a, a few years, but I think eventually it'll have to get another skin apply on it, so... That'll be a job in the future, but for now it's it's watertight, it keeps everything dry, which, which is what you want an observatory to do. Um, so we shall crack on, we'll be cracking on soon, fitting this inside the observatory, and we'll hopefully give it a, a first go. Fingers crossed, it'll be alright, but if it's in, I don't think I'll be using the Newtonia for Galaxy Season now. Which is a bit of an annoyance, because it'll be too tall. Unless I can figure out a way of how to balance that by bringing the tube down. I'll probably have to put a counterweight on the on the front of the scope or something. Maybe get one of those magnetic ones onto the tube itself. We shall see. But that's another plan. Anyway, that's all folks. Um just thought I'd give you an update and uh, hopefully if, if anybody's at the Practical Astronomy Show we'll see you there.